Hi, this is Mike for runrepeat.com and in this review we will have a look at the Under Armour Guardian 2. Let's go! features the memory write functionality, which we will have a look on later in the review. So, before I start doing my runs, let's have a look at all the facts that come with the Under Armour Guardian 2. First of all, let's have a look at the weight. It's stated on the German side of Under Armour with 326 gram, which is putting it in the really in the heavyweight section. I can compare it maybe to the Essex Cayano, which is a very solid, very stable shoe. And I think uh, the Under Armour Guardian 2 is exactly in this range as well. With a price of $130, this is uh, more on the cheap side. The competitive shoes in this area, heavyweight, uh, are mainly between 160 to $220, so therefore it's pretty competitive. Uh, let's see later on if it's really uh, it's not cheap, but comparable from the fabrication side as well. The drop is 8 millimeter. I would have expected 10 or 12 on that. Uh, so 8 is already a little bit aggressive, but nevertheless uh, should be nice to run. Then there is something special here. In the right shoe of the Guardian 2 you have a shoe sensor, which you can connect to the Map My Run app. I did this together. Uh, you can then uh, do runs with your cell phone and can uh, get various data we will have a look at later on. It's nice, but to be honest, as I have my Garmin Phoenix 5 already, let's have a look, it's getting similar results, or if it's just a little bit of a nice to have here. Then it comes with three different color schemes for men, two different for women, mm, pretty standard, nothing special here, so let's just skip this section. Then features, if you have a look at the homepage, yeah, it has a lot. For example, this hover technology, which should be some kind of possibility to get an energy return. You have compression mesh, you have solid rubber outsole and a lot of more. But there is a long list of features, but nothing that stands out really from the other shoes and the Under Armour is comparing with. So, after having a look at the fact sheet, then let's get going. In order to use the Map My Run uh, functionality, you first have to install the app, which is pretty easy. You just go with the Android system to your Play Store. Then you're looking for Map My Run. And here you are. In this case, I already installed it, so I don't do that anymore. You just open it then. After creating a login, then you, uh, then you can already start immediately with uh, first of all connecting your shoe. You see this on the top right. It's searching currently for my right shoe, my uh, Under Armour Guardian 2. When it is found, you see it's uh, connected in green. And after that, you can start to your running with uh, training starting and then uh, the GPS of the uh, um, cell phone will keep track of the uh, miles you're doing and then you get some additional information which we will have a look on later. So I did some runs, always having my Garmin Phoenix 5 uh, watch on the wrist and having my cell phone with the my run app with me and here is the results on the left side you can see one of the runs that i did with the garmin phoenix 5 it was 7.4 kilometers with an average pace of 522 this is then on the right side you can see the same run recorded by the my run app uh, it said it was 7.7 .7 kilometers and an average pace of 507 so i was way quicker with the my run app 
Um, to be honest, I think the Garmin is a little bit more accurate because I did this run frequently already and it was always around 7.4, 7.5 kilometers. And uh, if you just have a look at the different uh, kilometer times, maybe it's uh, getting a little bit more uh, explainable because here on the left side the uh, Garmin recorded the first kilometer with 5.49 and uh, here the Map My Run app said it was f uh, 4.52 so nearly 40, uh, it's, it's uh, nearly a minute of difference here, really a huge gap. Uh, nevertheless, um, in, in total, the GPS recording just from the view here doesn't seem to be uh, that far away from each other. So, and uh, then if you have a look at uh, altitude change, for example, uh, it was 30 meters on the Garmin. We have 48 uh, on the map my run. So therefore, it seems that the uh, ever the maps they have and uh, the underlying maps differ, and therefore maybe this could explain the difference in the total distance. Nevertheless, let's concentrate a little bit more on the map my run functionality here. Uh, as uh, it comes with the more or less with the shoe, you just have to install it, uh, no costs involved, you just open an account and for that it, it's not that bad, especially if you don't have any um, devices yet, so it, you don't have to buy a GPS watch which is pretty expensive as well, you can just use your cell phone and everybody has one. And for that, if you're not a professional athlete, then uh, nevertheless it's, it's pretty good, I would say. And when I have uh, a device that is already recording my runs, so for me it's the Garmin Phoenix 5, I would definitely not switch. But if you don't have one and you're more or less of a beginner with the running, then the Map My Run app is fine. I now did uh, numerous runs with the shoe and here are my results that I want to share with you. First of all, I divided the results into two sections because it's definitely a difference if you are running beginner, which I put at maximum of two runs a week and the running intermediate or expert, which is going three runs and more and definitely having more than one or two shoes. So I think for an intermediate expert, you have three to five shoes uh, in your cupboard. So first of all, I said, okay, you got the different environments where you're running, track, tarmac, gravel and trail. And for a running beginner, which I'm putting one or two shoes max, and track maybe is not something where you want to go for runs at all in the very beginning. So I guess a running beginner is going on tarmac or gravel. And on tarmac and gravel, it's more or less the same. It's a very solid shoe, especially if you're a little bit overweight and the Under Armour Guardian 2 provides all the cushioning that you need and the stability. And the best, I think, environment is gravel roads because there you have a little bit of cushioning as well from the road itself. Uh, because the track is providing you, is giving back all the power that you're pushing into it once again and so maybe a little bit uh, hurting a little bit more on the ankle as the gravel road. And for trails, uh, you can do trails as well, but easy ones because you don't have the, the grip you're expecting here and the uh, rock plate cover, so therefore bigger stones you will feel on the other side. And if you're going to the wear and tear section, no complaints here. The shoe is really solid and should be good up to 1000 kilometers, I guess. We have to watch a little bit about stability and uh, how it develops later on, but the first 100k, no issue at all and especially for the uh, running beginner the map my run functionality together with the uh, shoe sensor on the right shoe of the hover guardian 2 is a big plus because most of the running beginners are running with a cell phone and in addition to that now you can get data like cadence and other stuff that may be your interesting so for a running beginner and this score, uh, my score is 82 out of 100, so really recommendation here. If you're a running intermediate or an expert, so putting you at three or four runs a week upwards, then uh, it's a little bit different. I'm putting myself there and I would say for track or tar tarmac, it's way too heavy. So um, it's not needed, 200 to 250 grams is the max uh, of a shoe I would use there. And therefore I provided, for example, the non-tarmac an option 
that I have uh, is uh, so on a fast switch, which is way more uh, fitting to that. On gravel roads, I can use the Guardian 2 and then it's quite okay, but nevertheless I would go for an easy trail shoe here and in the trail running section uh, then we have to deal with the same issues I mentioned before, not enough grip, no rock plate and therefore I would recommend to use a trail running shoe like the Essex Trabuco 7 for example because this is uh, then tailored to uh, be able to cover with all these things the trail is coming up. The wear and tear, it's no difference between running beginner and running intermediate. I mean, solid shoe and should be able to go for up to 1000 kilometers. With the map my run functionality i will not use it in the future because i got my phoenix 5 and got all the necessary data that i need there so therefore uh, it's a nice gadget i tried but will not use it and in total if from my overall score is 65 out of 100 which means really i would not recommend it if you're putting yourself into the intermediate or expert section to uh, to buy this shoe even if it's uh, quite okay from a price perspective uh, it's simply not something that you will use very often i hope this uh, all the information that i'm giving you here is helping you with the choosing of your shoe and please provide me some feedback with the, in the comment section what your experience with it is. Thanks a lot.